Hey everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are out here on the launch pad today, finally with a real rocket. I mean, I know it hasn't been that long for you guys, but it seems like it's been a million years for me since I launched something that wasn't just going to burn up in the atmosphere and explode. But uh, more clips of that later, I promise. This is the MROV and it is going to Mars, hopefully. Uh, for by that we can keep our lucky streak going and actually land something on Mars again. But uh, we are at our appropriate relative inclination for the moon, so we're going to go ahead and get this off the ground. There's our ignition sequence start. Let's get the clamps off, and we're away. Now this is just a standard DN-1A, so it does not have the E-1 advanced engines on the boosters. Uh, unlike the last several flights that we uh, chucked in Mars's general direction, uh, those went up real real fast and uh, this is not a particularly heavy cargo so I didn't really feel the need for them um, I think we'll do just fine without the added expense although I did queue this rocket up before the uh, bankruptcy so really it is uh, its manufacture was not affected by our uh, certain lack of monies and such but uh, that being said, I'm just going to focus my attention on getting this little guy to orbit, and I'll pick you guys up in just a few minutes. And there's engine shutdown. Uh, final orbit is uh, 273 by 176, uh, nowhere near circular, but uh, now I get to show you a little bit about MROV. Uh, it is basically the same design as the uh, rover we sent to the moon, with a few science experimenty things uh, changed around, moved about a bit. Obviously it's had its comms updated and it lacks solar panels and instead relies on this RTG. Uh, but other than that, the rover itself is fairly similar. Hopefully it will uh, fare better as far as about not becoming suddenly subterranean. Uh, it has its own descent stage here, and the stage is entirely uh, supposed to just slow it down within the atmosphere. That's why the heat shield's below it. So kind of breaking away from my normal philosophy, putting the heat shield up top. And uh, really the reason for the choice this time was just that there was, uh, there was just so much weight with a deceleration stage, even if I tried to build it up here, which didn't really work using an asterisk engine. I uh, can't really get away with using one kilonewton thrusters on Mars for something this heavy. So uh, I've decided to go with uh, something a little more traditional in hopes that it uh, it fares well. I don't know, we had luck with a, an asterisk engine as a descent stage last time. Uh, obviously it still does have its parachutes, a couple of drogues, uh, three drogues, three primaries. This one, of course, is a dual housing. And uh, the airbags for its final bump onto the surface. But uh, anyway, we're letting liquid hydrogen just boil off here. So I'm going to go ahead and plot for Mars. Uh, derp, derp. Maneuver planner. That's what I'm looking for. Excellent. All right. So... Nope, that's Venus. That's Mars. Set as target. ASAP. Any time now. 3.95. What's our lowest delta V? 3.5. And that's in 41 days. Too bad we don't have 41 days. <laughs> that, uh, it kind of sucks, but what are you going to do, really? All right. And our, oh man, 17 minutes. We can just go ahead and go. We probably didn't even have to circularize. I probably didn't even have to shut the engine down. I could have just uh, pointed and gone to town. So yeah, by the time I get this thing reoriented to the node, which, uh, yeah, it looks like we are off plane. That's fun. Try to do as much of that wrapped up into this burn as we can. What do we got as far as thruster fuel? Uh, a good amount. Enough to run the thrusters for most of this burn. All right, come on, little guy. And, of course, it's going to be at night. Oh, man, while I think about it, uh, add target. Earth. Yes. I do not want to have to uh, deploy these later and figure out that they are not angled. 
Because then they do us no good. Earth. Thank you. And we can actually go ahead and deactivate you now. Uh, because we're going to need one of them to open on the far side of Mars. And, uh, that little guy. We're not going to activate him. We're just going to give him a target. Oh, Earth. There we go. All right. And it looks like we're lined up. It's telling me that node's going to take 11 minutes to burn. That is insanity. But we're on the uh, descending side of our orbit, which is fun. So we'll get a, a little bonus from that acceleration also. Not very much, but um, not as efficient as we could be. What's our delta V left in this stage? 3,000 almost to the button. 3066. So we are going to need a little extra buffer time to get our transfer stage in order. So we'll just go ahead and light these got these uh, RL tens up now. Risky, stable, very stable, and away they go. All right, no engine failures. It looked like we listed to the side there for a second or two. So I just wanted to make sure that we didn't have an engine failure. Those would be. Now would not be a great time to have an engine failure, but uh, we haven't had an RL-10 go out on this in a really long time. Knock on wood. God, I hope I don't jinx that. Please don't fail. They didn't hear me say that, right? Okay, well, we're going to speed through the rest of this burn. I'll pick you guys up in a second. Well, we're within uh, 0.4 meters per second. We'll just see if we can't uh, touch that up a little bit. Although I'm willing to bet Mechjeb has lied to us or I have uh, gone way too far over the burn time. Let's go ahead and just eliminate that node. And for the time being, we'll turn RCS off so it's not getting all wonky. Yep. What the hell? Ah. Uh. Way to go. Yeah, we're uh, we're nowhere near Mars. Turns out <laughs> we're going to miss by, like, a lot. So we're going to ramp this up a bit. Oh, boy. Of course it had us overshooting. That's fine. Nope, that is Venus. Let's, uh, let's see how close it... Oh, wow, that is way off. Nicely done, sir. Nicely done. So I'm going to tinker with this for a while, and I will uh, pick you guys up in probably, hopefully, less than a minute to you. It'll be much longer for me. Let's turn RCS back on. All right. That, uh, that, I, that I can work with. That's 175 kilometer. We can adjust a little closer as needed. But the maneuver node's in like 10 seconds. So we're obviously going to be a little late. All right, good. Uh, I tried to ullage and ignite the engine from here in the map view because I obviously couldn't see what was going on. But so we're just, uh, we're hoping here. It's only 300 meters per second that we're never going to get back. Thank you. Either my bad timing or Mech Jeb for really screwing the pooch on that one. So, sorry to be the boring thing and do this from the map view, but I feel like I almost need to. 171 meters out, meters per second out, I should say. Oh, hey, look, these guys are almost a Saturn. They probably only have like another year left. And DOS P1 is outside the uh, orbit of Uranus. Yeah, it's amazing to see how not very far on the grand scale of things, stuff that we've launched a long time ago has gone. <laughs> All right, 100 meters per second. So hopefully we should see the encounter. Perhaps. Come on. Any second now, right? Yeah, 
Apparently not. There it is. And bring it home. Uh, nowhere near, but that's probably just because we were late. No big deal. I will plot a correction for that also, because that is just a, a bit far off, further than I would like. So, yeah, I know. Tinkering with nodes is always the most fun way to spend your uh, evening. Obviously. Oh, come on. You won't let me change my view now? You did. I just have to click someplace else randomly. That's always awesome. All right. And the node is... other way oh yeah nope 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 I know I should be using maneuver node editor and I just never do I am a terrible KSP -er. all right well it looks like we're gonna swing in almost by the south pole I'm all right with that so well, it's only 14 meters per second. I'm not going to bother lighting the engines for that. I am, however, just going to do it all from the map view, which I know is the most interesting way to do this. Well, okay. Maybe I am just going to use the engine because this is taking forever. I have infinite ignition, so I'm really not that upset by it. What in the hell is going on with this node? Okay. Huh. Yeah, I, I haven't hit another key. It's doing that all on its own. It'll swing in. You notice our heading isn't changing. I'm just using the H key. Yeah, it slows down and then swings back. I'm still just holding the H key. All right, yeah, come on. Stop it. Stop it. RCS off. Collision course. Leaving it there. We will adjust that some other time. Right. <laughs> so we have... Uh, 1600 meters per second left in this stage. We should not have to hopefully do a mid-course correction, which means all of that 1600 meters per second is going to be used for slowing us down before we hit Atmo. Uh, it will not be enough to do a propulsive capture, but hopefully it'll give us enough to uh, aero capture off the back of this heat shield and put us in a uh, fairly respectable orbit, And in which case we will then ditch the heat shield and use this uh, Asterisk 2 to descend hopefully safely to the surface and man i'm excited to be doing an actual mission again sending a rover to mars just kind of seems like the quintessential my space program should be taken seriously by the kerbal people for realsies this time <laughs> all right well thanks for uh hanging out for this launch i'm gonna give you guys some uh sped up clips of some of the other things i've been doing trying to generate some money and uh get our reputation resuscitated uh which has been going pretty well actually i mean little increments little bits little you know here here and there but when you can do like five radio science from jupiter things uh every three days and they pay out like 50 grand a piece you start to build up some money pretty quickly and that uh that flyby mercury contract certainly or radio things in from Mercury it certainly helped out a lot. That was a nice bump that we needed. So, uh, I don't know. Enjoy the footage. I will see all of you next time. Till then. Some sounding rockets. There's a single E1 uh, on the bottom and a one kilonewton thruster up top. It's good for a couple million kilometers. I've done it dozens of times. I'm kind of used to them, but the payout's worth it, I guess. I did get to do some more interesting and fun things. Uh, this is the old X5 from like a thousand episodes ago.
Uh, I got a chance to fly about uh, 10 of these little guys. Uh, here's one getting up to altitude in preparation for a speed run, which was the footage I captured for this little clip today. Although I have been doing also uh, altitude runs with these little things. Uh, that carrier pigeon below it is powered by four uh, Avon jet engines, I believe. And really, uh, in a flat-out drag at about uh, 11 kilometers, the thing will get up to almost Mach 2. Those engines are rated for about Mach 2.5. So uh, when doing speed runs, that provided a nice little oomph to uh, get this little rocket guy going. And there was the separation. And you see the pigeon drifting off below us in the distance. And uh, the X-5 itself getting up to uh, some fairly ridiculous speeds. I think uh, at one point, not during a, an actual speed run, but more just during a uh, altitude run, going straight up nearly hit uh, 14 kilometers, or uh, 1.4 kilometers a second. God, not 14 kilometers per second. I'm thinking in way too big of a terms. I'm used to space flight, not this silly atmospheric stuff. But Val was up for the challenge, and uh, you can see her making the tail end of a speed run after having... No, made her records and gotten her payout and uh, soon she'll be streaking at nearly 13 kilometers a or, wow 1.3 kilometers per second over the uh, Kennedy Space Center but uh, just the flame effects here burning through the atmosphere is pretty awesome uh, this thing is really cheap to throw together which is why I just kept flying them over and over again because the uh, the payout was roughly four times the cost of the uh, aircraft itself even when you count ditching the pigeon into the ocean it uh, turned out pretty well so I've been able to make some money back doing a whole lot of these although the design could definitely use an update it's very nice and stable and relatively easy to bring home so Val was quite thankful for that as uh, she walked away from pretty much all of them, although not all of them were pretty, we'll say. But uh, she had about enough of my guff when trying to cheapen things up and find extra inexpensive ways to get up to about five or 600 meters per second on a more throttleable uh, device. Sometimes she just has to say, nah, -uh, not going to do this. Does a little backflip and tells me to kiss off. Good work, Val. That's going to do it for today, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I do appreciate it. And I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.